What's cracking, everyone? Amy Crichton here. Today we are talking about five ways to instantly make your videos better. And the best part is you can start straight away. Welcome back to the channel. It's great to have you here. Today, we're gonna to be talking about five ways to instantly crank up those filmmaking skills. And it's not that hard. It doesn't require any more money, any more gear. These are just all up here. Let's go. Number one is lighting. Lighting is critical to any video, whether you're a professional filmmaker, you're doing YouTube videos, you're making corporates or TV commercials. If your lighting is not on point, it is gonna show. There are so many different types of lighting situations that can really throw you a curveball. You could be shooting outside at golden hour, you could be shooting outside at night, you could be shooting inside with windows, without windows, you could be using a a lighting kit or nothing at all. You could be using practical lights. Now, one of the most underrated light sources that you can use right now completely for free is window light. No one talks about this. Now you can go on a professional shoot and not pull out your lighting kit at all because you don't need it because you have great window light. All right, so here I am. I'm standing in front of the window or more so alongside of it. I wanna create a little bit more contrast on this side. So if I wanted a more flat, even looking light, I would rotate this way a little bit more, but I do like this style. And as you can see, there's no other lights lighting me at this stage. It's just the window light. Okay, so we are in the same room. All I have done is move the camera about two and a half meters away from the window. <laughs> what a difference. Like, look at the background. It's dark, it's dingy. My skin has no life to it. It's dark, it's terrible. I've even had to crank the ISO up in the camera, which is not a good thing. It's just going to bring in more noise, more grain, which is what we don't want. We wanna avoid that. Now that was a perfect example of how important light is. If you're shooting in a room with no light kit and only relying on window light, you really need to think about where you're putting your camera, where is the light source coming in and make the most of that light. You don't just wanna light up your subject. You wanna try and get that spill into the background as well. So really think about where you wanna set up when using window light. It really can up your production value in an instant just by good positioning of your light source. Number two is music and sound design. This is crucial to your video's success. If you have a poor song choice or no sound design, it's not gonna stand out from someone who is using good song choice and wicked sound design. If you use something like a country and western clip to um, people jumping out of a plane, that ain't gonna fit too well. It's not gonna set the tone for the video that you're trying to, you know, you're trying to do excitement, adventure, and you're using country and western. And it's not really gonna gel that well. <laughs> If you're in a rush to get it finished and you just gotta find a song and whack that on there and that'll be fine, mate. That's not how it goes and that's terrible. So you really need to make an executive decision and really think it through what song is gonna suit my video the best. Also, when you're cutting your video, try and cut to the beat of the song. This is killer and will enhance your video tenfold. If you cut on just a half a beat before the main beat, it just, it irks me, it makes me angry. I just feel like I'm a bit OCD with that. It needs to be on the beat. It just satisfies my filmmaking life. Cutting to the beat can also really dramatize your film and make it punchy, make it full of action. Especially if there's a whole bunch of beats at the one time, you can cut like all together and just wow. Next tip is to plan your shots. This sounds so basic and you're like, Amy, as if I haven't planned my shots. Well, you may think you've planned your shots and then you get onto set and it's like, <gasps> I'm overwhelmed with everything that's happening right now. I cannot even think. That has happened to me so many times when I've rocked up on a shoot, I've had this great plan and it's all up here and I haven't written it down and then clients are at me, lighting people are at me, all these other people are at me and I forget about the main thing that I'm there for and my transitions and my shots and write them down, write them down. Even if it's the most basic thing, just say, um, you know, wide shot, medium shot, close up, close up of the person's hands. All these things can help you so much when you're on set because trust me, when you're on set and you've got clients in your ear and you've got you're dealing with the weather and the cars going by and you gotta wait for planes. And then you go to shoot and you think, yeah, I've got, I've got everything. 
get back to the edit and it's like, oh, I forgot to get that shot. You have to have a good plan. Are you gonna be shooting transitions? Are you gonna be shooting a set sequence? Are you gonna be shooting a guy walking down the street and a wide shot, a tight shot, a shot of his feet, a shot of his head? as he turns, what are you shooting? You need to write it down, you have to have a plan. Don't rely on storing it all up here because it's so much better to have it on paper. You can tick those things off as you go and you know you've nailed them. Next one, let's move on. Next is motion or lack of motion. Now there has been a lot of motion in a lot of videos lately. Everyone's using three axis stabilizers, drones, sliders, it's motion galore, cannot get enough motion. I love motion, don't get me wrong, I love my Ronin, I love my Steadicam, I love my drone, I love my slider, but there has to be something said about a camera on a tripod, a nice wide shot locked off, if it's nice scenery and someone's just walking through that frame. Good composition, is missed these days. We get caught up in moving around things and moving through things. That's, that's great, I'm all for it, I love it. But don't forget about your static shots. Don't forget you can shoot a whole sequence just on the tripod. You don't have to always use a gimbal and you don't always have to use a slider or moving. Sometimes that can be a little bit distracting in a film when you're trying to tell a story. So get back to basics and think about why are you putting your camera on a slider? Why are you putting it on the Ronin to get a gimbal shot? Is there a reason or are you just doing it because everybody else is doing it and it looks cool? Really think about your story and is it gonna enhance your video? Last tip is details. Before you hit the record button, please listen to me. Move that out of the background, move your boxes, move your clothes, move the random crap that's been sitting there for days, just move it out of the way. Clear your desk. If you got all this clutter here, phones, glasses, gaff tape, it looks messy. Let's, let's get rid of it. Move it. Ah, it's so much cleaner. Moving stuff out of the background gives your video a cleaner image. It makes it look more professional. It shows people you've thought about it. You've looked in the camera and you've thought, mm, I don't like that, let's move it. Sometimes I'll rearrange a whole room just to get a nice background, whether we're moving pot plants in there, um, books, nice lights, practical lights. Really think about your background. Don't just plod someone in a room and go, she'll be right, mate. She won't be right, mate, because it's gonna look Like plants, plants are key. Chuck some plants in the background. You gotta make sure that your background looks the part and is telling just as much as the story as your whole video. You don't wanna have random messy things in the background. It's just gonna make your video feel random and messy. It's like you haven't thought about it. You need to think about it. Also, if you're shooting an interview, think about the person that you're interviewing. Do they have flyaways? Is their collar not straight? Is their tie skew if? They won't mind you telling them, trust me, they will love you for it. Just tell them, hey mate, you got some flyaways, can I fix that? Don't be afraid to use makeup on your talent. Even if they're already wearing makeup, there might be a bit of glare or it might be too shiny. Chuck some powder on there and it'll really matte it up, make it look nice and it'll make their skin look so much nicer and they will thank you for it. Or even if you're shooting a guy or a boy or a child, it doesn't matter. If they have a receding hairline and there's a bit of glare, just pop some powder on there and it just makes such a difference. If you shoot the video and they've got a big glaring hotspot like a beacon coming out of their head, they're gonna blame you. So that's it, all you really need to do is think about it a little bit more. Think about your lighting, where are your windows, move closer to those windows. Think about what music you're gonna use and think about what sound effects you could use to enhance your videos. Plan your shots ahead of time and use motion for a reason, not just because it looks cool. And check the finer details in your frame. All of these things will enhance your videos. All you have to do is think ahead, plan ahead, and then go out and execute. Thanks for hanging out guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, subscribe, and comment down below if you wanna see more content like this, and I'll see you in the next one.